Okay, so let's evaluate the integral of the square root of x divided by x squared plus x dx over the interval x equals one third to x equals three. So this is a definite integral, but to evaluate it over those bounds, we have to find the antiderivative anyway. So my strategy for integration is the first thing I do is to try and simplify what we're integrating. So simplify the integrand. And what I notice is I have a square root of x here. And I think my life will be made a lot easier if I was to rationalize this third. So get rid of this square root. And how we're going to do that is to use a substitution. So I'm going to let u equal the square root of x. So taking the derivative of u with respect to x, I have du dx is equal to one half of x, so bring down the power. Okay, so another way of writing the square root of x is x to a half. So bring down the power, subtract one from the power, which gives me to the power of negative a half. And this is equal to, of course, one on two by the square root of x. Okay, and the square root of x is u, so it's one on two by u. Okay, so now I'm going to rearrange this expression so that we get all the u's on one side. So we have 2u by the differential du, and that is equal to dx. Okay, now, so on the other hand, if u is equal to the square root of x, this means that x is equal to u squared, so we square both sides. And of course, then x squared, if we square both sides again, is equal to u to the fourth power. So we can make all the substitutions now. Actually, before we do that, we have to work out, uh, we have to recalculate the bounds or the interval. So let's write that down, interval. So we're starting with x equals one third, which means that we're integrating from u is equal to the square root of one third, which equals one on root three. And we're integrating to x equals 3. So that means we're integrating to u is equal to the square root of 3. Okay, so now we can make all the substitutions. So the integral from 1 third to 3 of the root of x on x squared plus x dx is equal to the integral from u equals 1 on root 3 to u equals root 3. So I'll make the distinction here from x equals 1 third to x equals 3 of the square root of u is equal to u divided by x squared is equal to u to the fourth power, x equals u to the second power, or u squared, and dx is equal to 2u du. So the two can come out the front. We have two by the integral of one on root three to root three of u squared divided by u to the fourth plus u squared du. Okay, so we've rationalized the integrand and we can make further simplifications by factoring out a u squared on the bottom. So if I take a u squared out on the bottom, the front u to the fourth becomes u squared. So we have u squared plus one by u squared. Now because u is never equal to zero over the interval, I can simply cancel out the u squares on the top and bottom. So we're left with the integral of two, or two by the integral of one third two root three, sorry, one on root three, two root three of du on 1 plus u squared. I'm going to just switch the terms around because we can recognize this as a standard integral for which the result is the result of the integral is the arctangent or the inverse tangent of u and we still have the 2 out the front as the coefficient. So now we've got to evaluate the arctan of u between the bounds of root 3 and 1 on root 3. And because we've already formulated 
the bounds for u, we don't have to back substitute for the x term again. We can if we want to, but that's an extra step. So we can simply evaluate this with respect to u because we've already worked out what the interval of u is. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have 2 by the arctan of the root of 3 minus the arctan of 1 on root 3. Okay, now before you whip out your calculator and find what arctan of root 3 is equal to and arctan of what 1 third is equal to, or 1 on root 3 is equal to, uh, let's workshop this because we want to make mathematics a less mechanical process. Uh, yes, less of a mechanical process and more of a reasoning and problem solving process. So, the arctangent function takes in a number which is the opposite to the adjacent sides of a triangle, a right angle triangle, and it spits out an angle. So if we remember our unit circles, our unit circle geometry, where we have a hypotenuse of 1, you may recall if we make the opposite side root 3 on 2 and the adjacent side 1 half, then the angle here is equal to 60 degrees or pi on 3 in radians. So for this triangle we have cosine of pi on 3 is equal to a half, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, sine of pi on 3 is equal to root 3 on 2, and of course the tangent of pi on 3 is equal to the square root of 3. So of course that means the arctan of root 3 is equal to the angle pi on 3. So we have here pi on 3. You might also remember the triangle hypotenuse of 1. The vertical leg is equal to a half and the horizontal leg is equal to root 3 on 2 and the angle here being equal to 30 degrees or pi on 6. So in that sense cosine of pi on 6 was equal to root 3 on 2. Sine of pi on 6 was equal to a half and the tangent of pi on 6 is equal to 1 on root 3. So the arctangent of 1 on root 3 is the angle pi on 6. So we have 2 by pi on 3 minus pi on 6 which is equal to 2 by pi on 6 which of course is equal to pi on 3. So we found that the integral from x equals 1 third to x equals 3 of the root of x to x squared plus x dx is equal to pi on 3 which is a pretty cool and fascinating result. Okay, that'll conclude this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the section below. Check out my hundreds of other videos and playlists for tutorials that'll help you with your studies. Share this content around, make my channel famous. Okay, for now, best of luck with your studies, and I'll see you on my next video.